Hi, this is David Golly from Pentagon Solutions, and um, I wanted to show a 10 minute, very, very quick presentation on uh, using Revit. Um, and this might give users an idea of the product and also give you maybe an idea how you get started. What I'm going to do is start a new project, and I'm going to browse for my custom template file called Pentagon Commercial. I'm going to hit OK. And one of the great things about this project file is I have some default levels set up. So you can see that on my east view and here I've got find ground, first wall plate and foundation. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my ground floor and go to my design bar and start by adding some walls. So I'm going to pick my standard cavity wall, um, standard dense cavity. I'm going to say that the height and the type selector is locked into the first floor and I'm going to work off wall center line. So simply on the screen now I can actually start sketching the footprint of my building. Um, if I had a foundation detail to add in, um, I could go to my wall and I could say, well, let's add in a foundation in here. We could look for 750 footing. I'm going to set depth down to foundation. Rather than draw it, I'm going to use my pick lines. And if I hover over the center of the cavity wall and hit the tab key and left click, it adds in my foundation. Again, I can add some more internal walls in here. I could say, pick up the likes of my 100 block. Um, I could draw this again to my first floor and I'm not worried exactly about any positions here and I'll show you why in a second let's put a couple walls in because what we can do, we've got lots of nice tools in Revit we can actually click on any wall and the witness line comes in so if I drag and drop it from here I can actually say well that wall there had to actually be 6,900 mil let's put that position in if I need to align this wall up, now you can see in here that the level of detail I can change. I can take that back to a fine level of detail. Um, you can see I can take my thinner thick lines off. It's pr more practical to work in thick lines because that's how it's going to print. I could go to align, align, and actually lock the components in. Again, I could go to align and lock as well for the foundation. So this means now when I actually grab this wall and drag it, the foundation and the actual block wall is coming in with it. Again, if I need to put a floor slab in, I could go into floor. I could pick my actual walls to represent my floor. I could use my tab key and go all the way around, but because um, I've put some of my inner walls already in, it might trace it slightly differently. So I'm going to hit finish sketch and say no. And all the time in the background, I'm actually getting to see my 3D model. I can tile my actual plans that I'm working in here. And I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm going to add in some door components in here internally. As I'm bringing in my door components, if I hit the space bar, it'll flip the direction for me. Again, you can get to see them coming. I'm going to add in some window details. Have some loaded. It's actually tagging the window as I bring it in. And obviously this is a very, very quick presentation to give you an idea of the power of Revit. I'm going to put in a quick external door. I'll put one up here. And I'm going to put a staircase here. So I'm going to go to my modeling tab. I'm going to go to stairs. And you'll see how it's actually tracing the positions for the landings of my stairs. And if I need to change that riser, if I need to make a curved riser, I can go to riser, curve that, bring its position in, hit finish sketch, and it'll actually follow the geometry. A lot of people wonder how you get started to get up to the next floor. So what we can quick way to do it is if we copy all the elements in the ground floor, use the filter selection, check none, we go to doors, we go to walls, we go to windows, and go to floors and hit OK. We copy at the clipboard, we paste the line, levels by name, and we pick the first floor. And suddenly I've got a totally separate footprint from my first floor, which I can now start the edit. Because you can see in here, if I go back to the wireframe, I actually want to cut out my floor plan for my stairs. So 
Um, I can hover over, you can use your tab key to actually hover over and pick up the slab. Um, or you can actually pick it up in its 3D view, then go back into the plan view. Again, a change in one view represents a change in all views. So I go to edit. I can simply trace around the geometry of my staircase. Or I can simply drag it in. I've got fantastic tools like a line. So I can align it against that top riser. So when I hit finish sketch, the staircase will actually cut out there. Or again, the floor will. I can delete, it, delete out any of my doors. So if I'm looking at my wall plate in detail now, say for my roof, so I can go into my wall plate. Again, I'm going to tile this very quickly. I'm going to my basics roof by footprint. I can add in an overhang. And I'm going to use my tab key to pick up all the components, external components, and hit finish in the roof. I can change the type of roof. But not only that, we could change this roof by going in the edit. The client doesn't want it. Again, I could use my tab key and take the defined slope off. I could pick it up. I could edit the roof and add in a slope barrel. Say from here to here. Pick the slope barrel up. Edit the element properties. Add in a slope. Let's say 5 degrees. Finish the roof. You can see how the roof component hasn't tab tied in. So if I hit, or the walls, if I hit attach, it actually ties in. All the time in the background, my corresponding views, north, south, east, west, are all being fully tied in against this. But not only is Revit, we're not only creating a model, we're creating documentation in here. So final component I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to create a quick section through here. I can double click on this. We can go and look at my section detail. I could create an additional call out of this if I wanted, so I could go into my drafting. We could go in here and say, or my view, let's create a quick call out of this area here. I could double click on the call out and say I want this to be a 1 to 20 level of detail. I can make it a fine level of construction. And again, we can change this component in any view. I can align and lock my floor slab. I can actually change the components of the window in the view. It's going to update in the model. And this allows me to go in and add the likes of my drafting in. So I could say, well, let's add in the likes of my insulation detail. Let's add in the likes of my repeating block work. So um, my repeating detail, say for brick and section. And I'll add in some re more repeating detail for my block and section. So we're not just creating the model, we're actually creating our construction documentation. Um, our construction details as well. But here's the power in Revit, the link in the 3D model to the 2D details. I can align and lock. Again, I can go to my align and lock against the sill, against the block, against the sill, against the insulation. So it means now when I actually change the window detail, the actual insulation, the block and the brick and section is tying in with it. So I'm David Golly from Pentagon Solutions. This was a very, very quick overview of um, Revit Architecture 2009. Have a look out for some of the other webcasts. And um, if you have any queries, email me on david at pent-sol.com. Thanks a lot.